Boo! Did I scare you? I hope I didn't scare you too bad and make you run off. This cute little guy is called Little Boo in the um, catalog. And I am going to do today uh, heat embossing. I had a special request for it. So I'm not only going to show you how to heat emboss a stamped image, this tutorial will pretty much be for the brand new stampers. The ones who have not done much stamping or the ones who have started and are not having success. Um, maybe some of the things that I will have in here will answer some of their questions. The first question you might have is what is the best ink to use in heat embossing? Just about any ink will work. There are some inks that dry quickly, so you have to do the heat embossing quickly. There are other inks, Versamark, for instance, that are meant to stay wet for a longer period of time for the heat embossing process. The, the classic inks, they do stay wet for a little while, but they dry quicker than the Versamark does. And another question you might have is when you watch the tutorials, why do you see someone pouncing the stamp and then you see that they turn and look at it? Why do they do that? Well, I'll show you why they do that. When you get ready to stamp your image, some, then you pounce it and then you turn and look. Now, here's a, here's a really good example. This is why you look. The ink coverage is not very good there. In order to get proper ink coverage, then you have to put pressure all the way around as you're, as you're doing it. And that's why some people recommend that when you put it on, then you twist it a little as you pounce it down. That makes sure that you get the ink on. See how shiny that is? That means that you have ink all over the image in the manner that it needs to be, and that means it's properly inked. And I'll put it down here. And then there's the image stamped. Now I want to show you some things not to do and why. When you ink your image, you are not going to rock it back and forth. You're going to go straight up and down. And when you rock it, this is my stamp, and if I get ink on the wood, I'm all right. I don't care. That's not going to bother me. There are some people that keep the stamps for uh, collection reasons or to resell them. And the resale value is reduced if there's ink around the outside on the, the block. So if you're stamping with somebody's things and you get ink on the, they might not invite you back to play. So do not rock, do not rock the stamp as you're inking. You see the ink that I've put on the outside here? That's why you do not rock. And then the same applies with when you put it on, on your paper. You don't put it on and rock it. That's what happens when you rock it. This top, this top extra, I got ink on this outer part of the rubber from rocking it. This little bitty right here is from the edge of the stamp. You stamp and when you stamp you do the same thing. You put pressure straight down and don't rock it. And when you raise the stamp you raise it straight up. You don't, you don't press it and then roll off. And I'll show you why you don't roll off. If you roll off, then if you roll it off, then you smear the image, and then you get the outside. So if you want a good, clean image, it is straight up and down all the time. This is the, the classic black ink. All right, I'm going to put it up here. 
and get my embossing powder. Tap off the excess with the black ink behind and then now with the black embossing powder you can't tell so much that you have anything on but trust me there is. All right now I'm going to turn this blower on and it's going to be very loud and this air is hot 527 degrees it is hot enough to burn you so keep your fingers away when you're doing it and there you can see it start to go if you'll notice can you see the brown around the outside I've scorched the paper and that's not a good thing to do I wasn't seeing this stuff change because of the black background okay this is the stamp before you see it's not it's not real shiny but now we'll put the ink on it and then now see how shiny that is there is a difference all right now we're going to put this in put this little guy on and I did not use the embossing buddy so there's going to be flex on the outside and you will see that that happens okay hopefully you'll be able to see this as it changes I'll keep it in there there all right there that's how it's supposed to be and this is this is from the classic ink and you can see that it is kind of shiny okay now I'm going to show you on this black I think you'll be able to see it better with this black I'm going to use a white and a thing called white petals these are not stampin up embossing powders but I hope to be able to show you what I'm trying to show you with them okay there's the white embossing powder all right and there's the other one that's like an iridescent color and I've got to hold this down with some tweezers okay hopefully this one will work Did you see that one take off? This is heat embossing. And you can do it with whatever, whatever kind of stamp you want to do. Just remember, if you're going to do it on white with black, you need to have an embossing buddy. And that will stop that from happening. Okay, I hoped that helped get you a start in some of your questions that you might have about rubber stamping, how to do it, and heat embossing. Now, you go make your own message in a fold. Thank you for watching. Bye.